What's up guys and welcome back to another video. Today's video is all about rugby coaches. In this video I've decided to select my top five rugby coaches in world rugby at this present time. Now obviously in this video we will tend to agree and disagree which is normal but if you don't agree with my coaches and have other coaches that you would recommend or say are the top five in world rugby at this point of time, let me know in the comment section down below. Very curious to hear who and why you say your various coaches. Now, we've been blessed in rugby with so much talent to coaches around the world. I mean, if this video goes well, I'm going to do my top five all-time great coaches, but in this one I want to focus specifically on various coaches who I feel are brilliant at what they do and could still be brilliant as their career progresses. Some coaches, as you'll see in this video, are probably retiring soon, but other coaches still have a few things up their sleeve, and I really think they are going to make a difference in world rugby for their respective country that they could or might coach. So, first up, I have gone with Jake White from South Africa. Now, Jake has achieved quite a lot in his career. He's been around from junior level to senior level to provincial level. He has done it all. Now, Jake started off, well, not started off, but he did so well with the Junior Springboks, winning them their World Cup. And from that, he developed into the Springbok rugby team, where in 2007, he won the World Cup. Now, Jake is probably one of the only coaches in rugby history to have won the World Cup and to have known he's going to get fired. Yes, that is true. Jack White knew when he signed on for the World Cup or when he was leaving for the World Cup that he would get fired. As sad as that, and after all he's achieved, yes, it's shocking. Sar Saru made a big stuff up there. But on the other hand, Jake has achieved some greatness. He went on to go coach um, for Montpellier. He's done very well, or he did very well for them um, in his career. He went on to the Sharks, but that was brief. Very disappointed. I thought he would go on and create greatness around the Sharks, but unfortunately not. That's when he left off to France. He's been with the Brumbies. He didn't do too badly there either. But there's one thing that Jake White wants, and I know it for a fact, is he wants to coach on an international level again. I think there was all talk before Eddie Jones got the job that Jake wanted the English job. He's also gone for, there was talks of him maybe replacing Michael Checker um recently so there's there's a lot of talks of him wanting to be head coach again of an international team and i honestly think he deserves to be a head coach because i think he's got a lot more to offer now some people agree and disagree with his tactics of how he coaches but i think what he's offered to the world of rugby has been brilliant and i think as a as a rugby coach he's got so much more to offer and he can guide teams to other levels whether it's Australia who are currently in a bad state I reckon he could transform them um, with Rusty Erasmus going bring back Jake White um, for the Springboks after the World Cup I think after the World Cup we will definitely see this man be a coach for on an international level because um, he's got so much talent and I think he deserves to be the next coach of another international team. Who it may be, we will have to wait and see. But uh, Jake White is my number five top coach. Number four, I've gone with the, well not Welshman, the New Zealander who currently coaches the Welsh international squad and that is Mr. Warren Gatlin. Now I think here is where we might have an agreement or disagreement because I know there are a few people on the channel who have um, not been too fond of Warren Gatland of his career, be it for the Lions or be it for Wales. But overall, this guy, I think, has achieved some great, in fact, not some, a lot of great things. He's helped Wales win the Six Nations Grand Slam. He's also helped transform this team into breaking a new record of getting 11 consecutive wins, which is the most in over 100 years, which is absolutely outstanding. This team two years ago wasn't in the greatest of places. They've totally transformed and gelled. He's handled the team under very tough situations of injuries, and he's taken them to the next levels where they are talking of maybe being Six Nations champions. And they got a big game in two weeks time against England where we could just see this will happen but we'll have to wait and see because that's only in the future but Warren Gatlin I mean he's got the Lions tie he's won with the or well, he's played with the 
coached the Lions, sorry, he's coached Wales and now as he's ending off his career with Wales, he's going back home to New Zealand to either coach Super Rugby or maybe even the All Blacks. Now he, I think, has a lot more to offer and it will be a great way to end off his career than coaching the All Blacks. I think that isn't a dream for him. I know he said in the 1014 um, interview that he wants to go back to New Zealand, coach maybe Super Rugby. But I think the ultimate goal will be to be the All Black coach. And I think if offered, he will take that, no doubt. And I think he deserves it. I think he's achieved a lot in his career. Like I said, he's built Wales up and he's really put them on a good, good, good wicket at the moment. And I think as they go along, they're going to continue to improve and get better and better and be contenders for the World Cup, maybe. But um, I reckon he's one of the top coaches in world rugby and he's achieved a lot and his resume definitely shows for it so warren gatlin is my top number four coach number three i've gone with the one and only mr eddie jones now again there will be agreements disagreements here but there's one thing that you can't fault eddie jones yes he's got a big mouth but majority of the time, this man can back it up and he can recover and he can change things up. Now, when I say change things up, when he came into England, he was outstanding. 2017, I think he was the coach of the year. He took England on that that amazing winning streak, which was truly unbelievable. He won the Six Nations. He's done wonders with England. But he's also coached Australia and he's coached around the world and who could forget and yes I'm going to bring it up coaching Japan in the World Cup of 2015 and beating the Springboks Japan beat the Springboks due to Eddie Jones's great coaching tactics and skill and uh, that is something that people still talk about to this day and rightly so I mean you've just gone and beaten a World Cup the championship team from 2007 to 1995 and um, a, a weak team like Japan who you never thought would win in a million years went on and beat the Springboks absolutely a, amazing achievement but also if we look back last year England were in a very bad place people were calling for Eddie's head and all that stuff now all of a sudden England have regrouped and refocused and now are starting to build up again which is very impressive to take note and a lot of it has to do with your coach if your coach gets on with your players you are able to work well together an example of how this isn't done look at Australia and Michael Checker but for me Eddie Jones has really, really achieved a lot in his career and um, deserves a position in the top five. Um, and I think he's got also a lot more to offer, whether it's for England or any other nation. He might even, I think his contract ends at the end of the World Cup, but who knows, it might be extended. But he's got so much more to offer for, um, in world rugby, I feel, definitely on the international level. Um, I also remember him in 2007. He was a big help to Jake White um, as like an assistant coach or a mentor, which was very important to South Africa. So he was definitely a part of that era as well. So for me, Eddie Jones has achieved a lot in his career and definitely deserves it. Yes, he talks a lot of crap sometimes and he can maybe open his mouth a bit too much. But majority of the time, he does back it up and he does um, get things right. And he is very good at changing things up and um, bringing a team into something special. And for me, um, I've got to give credit where credit is due, is due. And that's why Eddie Jones is my top coach number three. Now, number one and two, I'm sure will be predictable for a lot of you too, because I talk about these two teams so much because of the respect I have for them as sporting nations um, and how what they've achieved in the the many years and recently for the other squad but for me number two i'm going with joe schmidt now the reason i'm going with joe is because of what well the reason why joe is here is because of what he's achieved for ireland now ireland have come a long way under joe schmidt he's really taken them to an absolute new level we can talk about it so many times but 2018 was the best year for irish rugby grand slam champions um, Six Nations Grand Slam champions beating Australia for the first time in many years in Australia as well as beating the All Blacks in an absolutely historic game and he was creating things he was making new memories for Irish rugby and he was doing things that were definitely not predicted like I said 
before with Eddie Jones in 2017 all we spoke about was England and um, New Zealand even at the start of 2018 it was England and New Zealand then it became Ireland and New Zealand because of the development of how Joe Schmidt has changed this team he did wonders with Leinster rugby he's done wonders with Irish rugby and for me personally I think he could have done continued to do wonders with either Irish or either the All Blacks. I think he would have been a dream coach for the All Blacks after Steve Henson. I think he would have done absolute wonders for that team and taken them to another levels. I mean, how, it's like people will say, what more could you do with the All Blacks? There's lots more. There's new strategies. You bring in new players. How are you going to develop them? And all that jazz. And I reckon Joe could have really taken that team to another level. But I think due to family reasons, he's decided to hang up his boots and retire after the World Cup, which is sad, but you got to respect the man for what he's achieved as a coach in Ireland. It's been absolutely outstanding what he's done. I mean, to get a team that many years ago, we weren't actually fearing Irish rugby. And now to this day, when we're realizing, oh, they could be contenders for the World Cup, Ish, they could win Six Nations again, or all that stuff. I mean, they got a record defeat two years ago against South Africa when they smashed us. And I mean, that's all under Joe Schmidt. He beat them in Chicago. He, well, the All Blacks in Chicago. Yes, they lost two weeks later, but he still did it. And he achieved a lot in his career. And I think he's an absolute outstanding coach and has got such a great um, resume on him that is just outstanding and for him to retire as Irish coach and to end off his note of what 2018 was and who knows what 2019 can bring him um, I think he will be very proud of what he's achieved and he definitely is one of the world's greatest coaches I mean he was a top coach in 2018 and rightly so he deserved it after all he achieved um, and I think he's absolutely fantastic and is my definite top two coaches in World Rugby at this stage. Number one, I think it's a no-brainer for a lot of people. This man has achieved so much. He's been through the downs of losing streaks with Wales. He's been through the highs of a winning streak with the All Blacks. He has done it all. He's been absolutely incredible and that is Steve Hansen. He has but he joined New Zealand, I think it was 2004, under Graham Henry. And from there, the All Blacks just went up and up and up and shot. And shot, shot, shot. It was, I mean, the All Blacks' current is, is absolutely outstanding. They've been number one in the world for over eight, nine years, which is truly, truly remarkable. He's got the World Cup medal in 2011 up with Graham Henry. 2015, he won it. 2019 he could very well win it again which is absolutely outstanding that man could have three world cup medals which will be truly amazing if he can get it and no one deserves it more steve hansen has been remarkable at everything he's done in his career he's been humble in defeat he's been respectful yes he's caused the odd rumble here and there but he's been brilliant at everything he's done and he's always backed it up majority of the stuff that comes out of Steve's mouth has never been absolute crap like some other coaches could say. It's been genuine. It's been legit. And um, I've always respected him for that. And also how he's gotten on with these players. The, the bond between the All Blacks and Steve Hansen is truly remarkable. And that should be a motivation and an inspiration to all other coaches out there to prove that if your coach and your team get along well, you are going to go so far. He's produced such amazing talent for the All Blacks and he's taken them to all new levels. I mean, the amount of trophies that guy's got in his cabinet, it's, it's ridiculous. I mean, the All Blacks are the best team in the world for a reason and he is definitely one of the reasons why they are the top in the world. And I think his resume and achievements in his career is absolutely amazing and the man deserves a knighthood i think of what he's achieved it, it's been remarkable especially especially if he can get another world cup medal even if he doesn't i think this man deserves it all um, he's a true ambassador a true legend of the game 
Um, and I've got so, so much respect for him. And remember, I'm a South African rating these guys from an unbiased opinion. And um, talking about these coaches really makes me so chuffed and proud to love this sport even more because of what they've achieved with their various teams and how they've come out through some challenges and overcome them. I mean, Steve has, I think, the record loss with Wales, or if I'm not mistaken, correct me if I'm wrong, but I mean, he went through, I think it was 11 game losing streak, uh, which is, that's not good, but he got up and recovered it, and now he's clapping the streaks with, the winning streaks with the All Blacks, which is amazing. He's a great guy and a definite, definite, in my opinion, number one coach in world rugby at the moment. Yes, Joe Schmidt is currently, or was, with Ireland last year. But for me as a whole currently, and I'm looking at the whole picture here, Steve Hansen is my number one. As I said at the beginning of this video, we've been blessed with great talent of rugby and top, top coaches. And um, it's it's a video that's very hard to make because there's other great mentions out there, like Rassi Erasmus for me, Gregor Townsend, and all those other fantastic coaches, Robbie Deans. There's so many. I mean, the current Crusaders coach is probably a future legend as well. I mean, they're, they're, they're br there's brilliant talent out there. So, but for me on this basis, I try to pick it from different nations and bring it together as my top. Five. So that is Jake White, number five, number four, Warren Gatlin, three, Eddie Jones, two, Joe Schmidt, and number one, Steve Hansen. That's going to do it for today's video, guys. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, be sure to give it a thumbs up if you haven't already. Make sure you are subscribed. Hit the subscribe button. It's red. It's down here. Hit it. We're approaching 11,000 subscribers. And while you're there, turn on the bell notification just next to it so you're always notified for all future videos. So much to come. Super Rugby predictions, and then a few other topics on the international level. So don't go anywhere. Thanks so much for watching. Stay safe and never give up. Cheers.